Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Um, we're gonna start, uh, we see we're gonna sign a paper that's due on the uh, 4th, or excuse me, the 11th, I mean, okay. It says 12-4, but I probably looked at the 4th and didn't add 7 to it. So as you're looking at this, I, this is something that I'm not going to collect, okay? So it's something that you can go over for your own benefit. I would not be concerned about page one, okay? When it comes to density problems, we didn't go over those either, but there's uh, similarly some uh, problems pretty much from every portion of this uh, semester that we have covered with the exception of uh, classifying and balancing chemical equations, okay? And with that, okay, we see examples of the five types of equations that you need to know. And we did go over this when you were freshmen in physical science. Perhaps how many of you remember the five classifications of reactions? Just give me an example of what you can remember. You didn't say anything. That's it? Okay. No. Nope. That's a type of reaction. So uh, maybe just look up at the board and see if something may come to mind. Because if, if we just keep telling you, okay, and, and this is one of the things I try to explain to students. Do, are we asking questions because we seriously don't know? Or is it we're, it's just a little un, unclear? Okay. Otherwise, how can we get a, a fair evaluation if you keep asking question after question after question? Because when you do that, maybe you aren't learning anything. And that maybe this is a prime example. Yeah, we could just go up there and just write it out and say, well, this is what that is. And then, do you learn anything from that? My answer would be no. Okay. But to maybe help point us in the right direction, why don't we try something like this? Okay. Does that maybe ring a bell? S, R, S, Y, D, C, D, R, and C, B. Those are abbreviations for your five reactions. They're not necessarily in the order that they are placed up there, but what do you think might that first one be? If you don't know, just, just guess. I mean... Where are you getting covalent bond from? No. Covalent bonds deals with uh, those dot diagrams. Okay, well, at least, yeah, we're, we're trying. All right. That, that is what I asked. First one, yes, is single replacement. Okay? So, as you had said, S R, single replacement. Was that just a guess or. Okay? Because the clue for that is what do we see on the reactant side? A lone or single what? Aluminum is a. It's a metal. So, if it's by itself. Well, then that is a single replacement reaction. Okay, so not only do we have to classify these, sometimes you need to finish them, but then ultimately balance them as well. So, the symbol for aluminum is what? Plus, does anyone perhaps remember, what's the nitrate ion? NO3. So, 
remember acids are proton donors which it gives away hydrogen atoms so how many hydrogen atoms belong here do you think just one HNO3 is nitric acid okay now when we get to this side of the reaction okay we've got aluminum nitrate and what's left over well, some hydrogen okay yes it's diatomic so we need two hydrogens okay the charges do not change from one side of the equation to the other this is plus zero because it's by itself so it's neutral but in this case it will ionize and once it gets over to this side we always said start with your negative ions NO3 has a charge of negative what? Negative 1. In other words, this whole thing, NO3, negative 1. And what does aluminum have for a charge? What column is it in? Since it's not a D block element, it's in the third column, so that's positive what? Positive 3. So, do or does that add up to zero? Positive three and negative one. No, it does not. Okay. What's the least common multiple? What's three divided by three? So we've got one. Three divided by one. Okay. Now we are ready to balance that. Okay. all caught up here okay so where do you think a good place to start something on the right side okay well you got two hydrogens on the right how many are over here so what would you typically do but if we put a two here now I've got two nitrates and three over here we didn't gain anything so keep in mind when you see that the least common multiple between 2 and 3 is 6. So when you do that, now, in case you're wondering, well, how would you know that? Okay, so don't write this part down. Because what you would do is what we're saying here is you, if you put a 2 here and then say well, our hydrogens are balanced, but now we've got two nitrates to three of them over here. Okay, well, this has to get up to an even number. So if you have three, how do you get that up to an even number? Times it by two, you would double it, okay? So now two times three gives you what? So again, that just comes with experience. So now we gotta take this back out, put a six here, okay? So now our nitrates are balanced, two times three gives you six, okay? And got how many hydrogens over here now six times one and how do we get this up to a six okay and is there anything left and we do what okay so our blanks four of them would be what And again, what, the reason we do it that way is it just makes it much, much easier for myself to go through and say, okay, boom, 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 just go right on down the line. Okay, we went through that really quick. Are we okay with single replacement reactions? Okay, can I erase that top one? 
So if now we can get ourselves a little more room here. Maybe I should have left those abbreviations up there for you. But you probably have them wrote down somewhere, perhaps. Okay. So now. Okay. When it comes to this next one, we've got a hydrocarbon. Why would you suspect that's a hydrocarbon on the left? Because it's got hydrogen and carbon, hydrocarbon. It doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to figure that out. Hydrocarbon, hydrogen and carbon. Okay. So now, one of the tricks that we had tried to illustrate or show you when you were a freshman would be of these two reactions. Which one of those two do you think you'd rather balance? This top one or this bottom one? Okay. Alright. So we'll try the top one. Alright. So as we look at that, okay, we've got two carbons here. How many carbons are over here? So what would we do? So we've got six hydrogens on the left. How many are on the right? So what would we do? So our carbons are done. Our hydrogens are done. Now we just have to do oxygens. What's two times two? And what's three times one? So how many oxygens are over here? Well, we got an even number here and an odd number over there. Okay, so our, our point is that when we see these reactions, for instance, uh, whether it's a, a quarterback or a point guard, as the quarterback is standing back in the pocket, what do you suppose he has to recognize about the defense? It's either what or what? Cole? But what do you, just guess. The cornerbacks and safeties, they're either what or what? Guarding the receivers, how, are, how might they do it? It's either gonna be a zone defense or they're in, in man defense. Quarterback has to try to decipher that. A point guard bringing the ball down the court. Okay, looking at the defense. If they're all just standing around the lane, what type of defense is that? Zone. But if they're actually guarding a person and following them as they're moving, then it's not zone. It's man to man. So that's the responsibility of those two different athletes. So your responsibility here is to notice these carbons here. Okay. So if we see an even number when it comes to these hydrocarbons, we want you to double that right away. Does that maybe ring a bell from two years ago? Are we just saying that? Okay. So if we double this right away, okay, two times two, we've got one here. How do we get it up to a four? Okay, two times six, okay, so how do we get 12 over here? What's four times two for oxygens? Six times one, how many is that total? 14, and we've got two of them over here. Okay, so that would be two, seven, four, six. Now, when we see an odd number in these hydrocarbons, we don't have to worry about doubling that. Okay? We just go ahead and jump right in and balance this. 
So three carbons on the left, one here, what would we do? Okay, eight hydrogens on the left, two over here, three times two, four times one, so six plus four, so what would we put here? So we see one, five, three, and four. Okay, now we went through that really, really quick. Is there any questions over these two? Yes? Yes. Okay, if we see a hydrocarbon that's combining with oxygen, it's burning. So we've got a combustion reaction. Okay. Are we on the bus? If we have a hydrocarbon, hydrogen and carbon, combining with oxygen gives us the same byproducts every time. Carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide and water. Yep. Okay. Can we erase this to give us some more? Combustion. One's good. Two is good. But we, we're not going to proceed forward until we see here you're good. Okay. Okay, so this next reaction, okay, what is the symbol for mercury? And what's the oxide ion? What's the oxide ion? Okay. That's hydroxide. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the charge of the oxide ion or oxygen? What's the charge of oxygen or the oxide ion? No. No. It's in column six, so how many more electrons would it want? So that makes it a negative what? All right. Okay. So what's this Roman numeral telling you? Does that add up to zero? Okay. So we see that this is breaking apart to mercury plus oxygen. What do we mean by two oxygens? Two oxygens like this is diatomic because it's a gas. That's right. Okay. So we've got one oxygen on the left and two on the right. So what would we do? So what are we going to put here? So don't do this. Why can't you do that? Because you're changing the formula. You can't do that. All right. So when you balance these, remember you've got to put a large coefficient in front. So for mercury, two times one is, and 
how many do we have over here? Okay. And then it's balanced. Okay. So we've got two, two, one. When we see a compound being broken apart, we're not making anything, but if it breaks apart, it is decomposing. This is a decomposition, decomposition reaction, or DC. So the first reaction we went over was SR, single replacement, because you have a lone or single metal replacing another element. That was the aluminum replacing the hydrogen in nitric acid. The next equation was the hydrocarbon, or C3H8, combining with oxygen, then to give you your same products every time, CO2 and H2O. Okay, can we erase this? Yeah. So, we're good. Okay. All right. As we continue forward now, sodium hydroxide. Magnesium. Okay, sulfate, okay, do you think we need to change anything in this compound? No, because this is negative one, that's positive one. Sulfate is negative what? Magnesium is plus what? Does everything add up to zero? Okay. So, what we see happening is this is a double replacement reaction, or DR, because the positive ion of this compound bonds with the negative ion on this compound on the right side. In other words, we see this bonds with this on that side, and this one bonds with this. So we see two replacements. That's why it's called double replacement. So it doesn't matter, you always, always rate your positive ions first, always, okay? But it doesn't matter whether you start with the sodium in its replacement or the magnesium in its replacement. So you pick, sodium or magnesium, okay? So what does the sodium bond with, okay? There's one replacement, what is the other one? Okay, remember the charges do not change. So we'll give you that one. Negative two and positive two now adds up to zero because one of them is a negative one times two is negative two plus two, that adds up to zero. What about this one? Okay. And do we need parentheses around the sodium? No. So why did we need parentheses around the hydroxide? Because it pertains to both of them. Because this is a polyatomic ion. Both elements act as one. Okay? So the last thing we need to do is balance that. So what are we going to do? Where do, would you like to start? Okay.
Okay. Okay. So does it make it simpler if we write these out? We said last last session no one had replied, so we just said you just do it in your head. Okay, and that's fine. Two sodiums over there. How many are on the left side? So what would we do here? We put a two here. Good things are probably gonna happen. I think we're done. Okay, well, just always double check. What's two times one? How many do we have over here? Okay, two times one. How many are over here? Okay, how many magnesiums? How many are over here? How many sulfates are on the left? How many sulfates are over here? I think that's balanced. Two, one, one, one. Okay. Remember, double replacement. Are we good? Middle. Front. Okay, so this sodium bonded with this SO4, right? So there's one switch. Then this magnesium switched from the sulfate to the OH. Yes. Okay. Last one, and, and you could say maybe we went through this real quick. But for one, this is recorded, and two, it gives you more time to work on this and work on your review on what you think is necessary. Okay, so lithium is what? Oxygen is what? Okay. And what's lithium oxide? What L I and okay. Remember, when these are by themselves, you don't need to change anything. But when you start combining them, like we did last chapter, that's when you need to see if the charges add up to zero. Oxygen is negative what? Yeah. Lithium is plus what? That doesn't add up to zero. We've got two lithiums here. Okay, that's how you could start. But now we've got one oxygen and. So then, if there's two here and only one there, what would we need to get this up to a two? And then two times two gives you. So sometimes this is just trial and error. Sometimes it's just not going to work the first time through. Okay? Four, one, two. This is where we see two 
substances coming together to make one. And if you make something, like if you need to make a serum, means you synthesize it. So this is a synthesis or SY reaction. So the first reaction that we did today was a single replacement or SR. The second equation that we did was a hydrocarbon with oxygen. That is a combustion or CB. Okay. Then the next equation we did was that of something breaking apart, which is just the opposite of this. When something breaks down or breaks apart, it decomposes or decomposition. Then we did this reaction, which we see two metal ions switching with their partners. So two switches, two replacements. That is double replacement. And then finally, our last one, making something SY or synthesis. Okay. Sure. So now we've got these to balance and classify. We're combining two of these into one to help you out a little bit. Yep. So the directions are written as follows. It says, place the appropriate abbreviation for each equation next to the blanks. Then, or I should say, and then balance the following equations. So, and what we see here, this is just the number of the reactions that you see. One, two, three, and four. And then the set of blanks, that little number is just telling you for which reaction that is going to. Okay? So, what I will ask is on that front page, go ahead and pick a number, one through four. Number two. It's the first number we heard. Okay. So it says hydrogen chloride plus barium gives you hydrogen plus barium chloride. So what's the symbol for hydrogen? What's the symbol for the chloride ion? Okay. And it says plus. What's barium? That's boron. Okay. Then you have your arrow. Then it says you have hydrogen, which we said is H. And then plus barium, again, is BA. What's the chloride ion? Okay. It's a gas, so it's diatomic, okay? And chlorine is a halogen in column seven, so it's a negative what? Hydrogen is an alkali metal in column one, or excuse me, not a metal, but it's in column one, so it's plus one. So that adds up to zero. This is a neutral. The charges do not change. Barium is an alkaline earth metal in column two. So it's plus two. Does this add up to zero? Okay. So we see what's true about the barium. It's a metal and it's all by itself. What do we see about the barium? It's a metal, and it's all by itself. Is it all by itself over here? No. no, it booted the hydrogen out of there. So how many replacements took place? One. So that is, so what we want you to do, you see where it has the four blanks, and again, that little two is just telling you that's for problem number two. Okay? 
So next to that, we want you to write SR because it's a single replacement reaction. Then the last thing you need to do is balance that. Which, what do you think you would do? Two chlorides on the right, how many are on the left? Yep, and you're balanced. Okay, so the rest of the time, which again, we wanted, not that we wanted to rush through that, but you can go back through this in case something was unclear. The rest of the time is yours to work on these, work on your semester review, whatever it is you feel necessary. And we'll pick up with any questions you may have tomorrow.